So you see, my entire life I've been told that I have to be very tolerant to people, that I have to love everyone because everyone deserves to be loved, that everyone deserves to have a good life and everybody deserves attention and care and whatever. And so I went with that theme for the majority of my life and especially a period of two years that I want to talk to you about today. This was back when I used to play video games on a daily basis for around six hours. Daily basis, six hours a day playing video games. You know, I've talked about this experience a while back. Plenty of fucking times in my videos, but this is with a special theme in mind. The time that I used to spend around those people. Six hours a day, every single day with barely any fucking exceptions from that, just playing video games and just talking and just watching Netflix shows together and just looking at memes and laughing together about everything. In that time of my life, I felt the most feminine, pissy, agreeable piece of shit that you can ever imagine. Back when I used to play six hours of video games every single day and spend my time around all these girls and these guys who acted like girls, basically. And I was one of them. I was one of the guys that was acting like fucking girls because that was what was accepted. That was what I lived with. Because that is what I saw on social media. That is what I saw when I went to school and I saw a bunch of guys around girls and everything. And I thought to myself, oh, well... If they're doing well, then probably I have to hop in there as well. That is what I saw on TV and all these kinds of fucking bullshit Hollywood movies. This is what all these other girls that I was spending my time with were telling me that. Oh my god, it's so nice to have a guy around. That you can talk about with all these kinds of crazy topics and everything. I ended up acting more feminine than I ever had in my entire life up until that point. I was the most feminine that I had ever been while spending six hours a day playing video games with people that I barely knew, people who were spending several fucking hours a day on social media just dead scrolling like that. People who were in regular, regularly posting to Instagram, people who were spending their time on TikTok, people who were spending their times in all kinds of stupid sketchy discord servers talking to all kinds of random fucking people making friends with all these kinds of random people from across the world because oh my god that that's so cool right you know make some random friends that you don't even know at all you haven't you don't even know their fucking name you don't even know how they look like but yeah you know i'm gonna make a i'm gonna make friends with them i'm gonna be great friends with them and they're gonna be all my friends and everything and it's gonna be great I spent my time around people like that. I was one of those people as well. And I felt the absolute most feminine, shitty, and most weak person that I believe I could have felt like. I felt weak as fuck. I used to see all my classmates in school, you know, just... They weren't necessarily very well off, but there were these guys in our class. These kinds of punks, you know, the bastards who used to go around making other people cry and feel like shit bro they had something to them you know i'm not gonna i'm gonna condemn the fact that they were out there fucking making people feel like shit that i mean that is fucking horrible no doubt about it but these people they had a different fucking energy to them bro these people acted differently and no wonder why i felt as if they had some sort of fucking control over me some sort of power over me it's because they were acting in a masculine manner they had this masculine kind of aggression, energy, and competition just fucking waiting to be fucking touched on. But they were using that masculine aggression and competition and all these kinds of positive traits that a young man could have. They were using those things to bully other people, to be cunts, to be absolute horrible people, right? They were using something beautiful to create something horrible. And yet they ha I noticed that energy inside of them. And while I was the one that in school was spending hours of his days around girls on a social media, just scrolling for all this kinds of fucking feminine brainwash shit, playing video games with all kinds of people who were from the exact same environment, 
watching all kinds of Hollywood movies in which the, all they talk about is this fucking feminine. Oh, be in touch with your emotions and, you know, just love yourself and just, oh my God, and all these kinds of stupid fucking things, right? And I saw those people. I saw the people that were bullying me. I saw the people that were living this fucking life. And I just couldn't help but feel as if they had power over me. Just from simply looking at them. Not the way that in the shirt they looked itself. And the way that, you know, the clothes, the, the kind of fucking brands they were Like, bro, I have this shirt. I've had this shirt for fucking years, right? But thinking about it. It didn't matter what kinds of clothing they were wearing. Like, your clothing doesn't matter when it comes to your masculine authenticity. I was looking at these guys. And, you know, maybe looking back now, you know, they were definitely fucking feminine as fuck. And they had a bunch of shit wrong for them. But they had a sense of masculinity inside of them. This sense of aggression and competition. Striving to be stronger and trying to beat your fucking competition. Right? But they were, again, they were using that for negative things. They were using that to do negative things. Yet they had that energy. And I was the feminine guy in school just spending all his fucking breaks. And I was also a desk mate with a girl. And like all, all that I would do most of the time was just talk to girls all the time. Just be this fucking... I was that guy, bro. I was that one guy that all the girls used to have around and they just tell them secrets and it'll be like, oh my gosh, bro, like, oh my god, I, I, was that, I was that one motherfucker, bro. And guess where that led to me? That led me down a path of fucking depression, nihilism, and anxiety. Things that I can still remember very fucking clearly. Each and every time that I had to... I'd have to enter my class each and every time I'd have to go somewhere in public. Each and every time I had to go to handball practice. Each and every time I had to look one of those fucking people in the eye. That sense of anxiety, that sense of impending doom. That sense of fear. It's fucking, it's still very, very strong in my mind even now. And that all happened because I was spending my time around all these kinds of feminine people who were giving off this feminine energy. I was spending my time around girls, you know, and they're naturally going to be feminine to some extent. I was spending time on social media in this very, very feminine environment. You know, in this kind of, oh, just enjoy yourself and love life and funny memes and wholesome memes. And oh my God, that's so wholesome. That's so cute, guys. Let's all smile at this fucking dog. While wasting fucking 30 minutes just scrolling like that until we walk, we look at the watch and we're like, oh shit, we should have been doing our homework now. Oh shit, I should have been outside like doing something productive, maybe like fucking going on a damn walk, spending some time with my family. You know, I'm, I'm here fucking scrolling, looking at wholesome memes, bro. And this was the worst period of my life. This was the time in my life where I felt the most depressed, nihilistic, and anxious, as I've mentioned before. These, these were the points in my life where I simply sometimes felt as if I just didn't want to wake up the next day. As if I just didn't, simply didn't want to exist. I never had any suicidal thoughts, yet I always felt as if my life was lacking something that I just couldn't seem to find. I just couldn't seem to get, and I thought to myself, What's the point? What's the point living here? What's the point being here? Like, I just don't get it. I didn't, again, I didn't want to kill myself. I didn't want to die. I just felt as if I had no purpose on earth. I felt as if whatever I was doing, it just didn't make any sense. Whatever I was doing, it was just to chase short-term pleasures, to just go on fucking social media and get a quick dopamine boost for looking at a guy with big fucking biceps and a girl with huge tits and an ass. So I could go and look at a bunch of fucking girls getting fucked by another guy in Pornhub. So I can just go on and play a bunch of fucking video games with tanks. Blowing each other up and shit. This was my life. This was the way that I was spending my time. Oh, and let's not also forget the fact that I was... While this was happening, I was on Discord talking to a bunch of fucking girls, by the way. 
like consistently. Bro, I don't have anything wrong against talking to girls. But when you're doing it as I did and your only friends are girls and especially girls who are spending hours and hours every day playing video games, being on social media, caring about their looks. Just always acting like, oh my God, you know, I have to I have to portray myself in a very good light or else things are not going to be nice. Oh my God, you know, I... I've I've watched this crazy fucking Hollywood love show and now now I'm very self-conscious about myself. I was spending my time around people like that, man. How can you not be feminine, weak, submissive, docile when you spend your time around those kinds of people and when you consume that kind of content? You see, you're the average of the five people that you spend your time with. This is a quote that you might have heard Plenty of times before, right? And you're thinking to yourself, oh, he's fucking bringing that shit up again. Bro, listen. This is more important than you actually think. You are the average of the five people you spend your time with. Now, who is that? Maybe that's your family. Maybe that's your mom. Maybe that's your dad. Maybe that's your friend in school. That's three people, right? And for me, the other two was this one girl and this one guy that I was consistently playing video games with. And funny thing is, while I was doing that, I was taking away time for my fucking family. I was taking away time that I was spending with my mom and dad, with my brother, with my grandparents, with my uncles and nieces and relatives. I, would, I was taking all that fucking time away. I was breaking that in half like this. And I was left with two fucking people. Two people. That being that one girl and that one guy that I used to play video games with all the time. If they're going to watch this video. Look man, I don't want to fucking hate. I don't want to give you hate. But things were not okay, dude. Two people, which I used to play video games with. And be on social media with all the fucking time. All the time. And I was taking away time with all the other free people that, you know, I, I was averaging my time with. And I was spending more fucking time with those people than with my own fucking parents, bro. I was spending more time around these two people and some random fucking guy at school. Or some random girl at school, most probably. Than with my fucking parents. Than with my brother. And so what do you think happened? I started developing all these kinds of weird, stupid opinions. I started developing all these kinds of stupid ideas about the world. These kinds of retarded fucking beliefs. Oh, that we should be like this. And you know, and that we should, we should just be in touch with our emotions. And we should just always act on behalf of our emotions. Because, you know, I mean, emotions are natural. I'm a natural person, you know, because, you know, I don't, I don't hide the fact that I'm angry all the time and that I... I don't even like the world and everything and I hate myself. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't hide it. I don't hide it. Like, I'm authentic, guys. You know, I'm a, I'm a depressed piece of shit. I'm not going to do anything about it because, you know, it's okay not to be okay. This was the kind of fucking content that I was fucking consuming. Everywhere. Everywhere. This was the content that was filling up more than six hours of my day. And you see... The five people that you're averaging your time with, right? They, they don't actually just have to be five people, right? Like these people that you spend your time with. They can also be other objects and influences. It can, I mean, as much as human beings are, are social beings, right? You want to be around other people. People nowadays, they don't even fucking do that. People nowadays, they just end up burying themselves in all kinds of stupid fiction books about like this crazy Hollywood fucking kind of guy right this kind of character who is who he's amazing bro he's doing this and he's doing that and he's perfect and you're spending your fucking there's bro there's people out there let's not fucking lie there's people out there who have fucking dolls like grown-ass adults with dolls in their room and just playing with fucking dolls like this. Like, oh my god, she's so cute. And they have like fucking teddy bears on their fucking bed. Like, I don't know, maybe maybe that's just that's just me. 
But it doesn't just have to be people. It can be fucking influences. It can be the kind of ideals and beliefs that you're subjected to, that you are constantly presented to on a daily basis. Things and objects that you see in your environment that you're constantly subjected to, like they have a toll on your brain. Like we don't talk about this enough and this is why I felt like I needed to make this video because we don't talk about this enough. The things that you have in your environment, the way that your environment is like, it dictates who you are. It dictates who you are. The fact that maybe you have a fucking mess in your room right now, that clothes are fucking scattered all over the damn floor, that your that like your fucking desk is messy as shit right now. It's filled with fucking cocoa puff dust in there. Cheetos and shit. Your fucking clothes smell of sweat. They stink of sweat. Those things, they really change who you are. They honestly, on God, on whatever you want to fucking swear on, they change who you are. You have been socially conditioned to act like a little bitch your entire life. Think about that. You have been socially conditioned. You have been forced. You have been brainwashed to act like a little bitch your entire life. If you were like me a while back, two years ago, maybe less than two years ago, you were consuming this kind of fucking bullshit content on social media. You were watching all these kinds of fucking politically correct motherfuckers, you know, telling you that, oh my God, we should all just love each other and, you know, like tolerate everyone and love everyone. And, you know, life is just perfect, guys. Let's not talk about the fact that, you know, men are acting more like fucking women now and that, you know, there's more and more fucking children killing themselves because they don't feel like they have a place in the world because they are exposed to a bunch of bullshit fucking ideas and opinions that just don't make sense, that just, they should not be exposed to in the first place. They're sexualizing things on a daily fucking basis. I was watching fucking YouTubers who are sexualizing things just like that because I was funny, funny joke, guys. I was watching funny sex memes. I was watching fucking re some guys read off a fucking Reddit post. Like, this was the kind of shit that I was watching, bro. I was watching skinny, fat, skinny, fat, sweaty, weird guys, grown fucking adults playing Minecraft. Like, it's only now thinking about it, bro. It's fucking grown adults that are literally either skinny or fat as shit. And they're fucking playing Minecraft. They're all together on a fucking server. They're like, oh my god, they're, they're making up fucking stories. And they're playing around and they have millions and millions and millions. You probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention it. But you probably know what I'm referencing right now. Millions of fucking people watching that. Millions of people making fucking all kinds of art and like being part of this loving community that cancels everybody, that fucking talks shit about everybody and that, that, that does not let anybody have freedom of speech. You know, if I were to send this video in a community like that, it would get taken down instantly because, oh no, no, you're not politically correct, bro. You're just bullshitting yourself, bro. Like, oh my God, like, you're not supposed to say that, bro. That That is unacceptable, bro. No, 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 no. No, 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 you have to love everyone. You have to tolerate everyone. Fuck everyone. Fuck tolerating everyone. I'm not gonna tolerate the little bitch. If you're a fucking little bitch, I'm not gonna tolerate you. You know, if my younger self, one year and a half, two years ago would have heard this, he would have gone crazy. He would have thought that I am absolutely off the rails. But this is how I authentically feel about it. This is the absolute fucking truth from the bottom of my heart. If you're a little bitch, if you act like a little bitch, then I don't give a fuck who you are. I will not tolerate you. This is crazy, isn't it?
This is against everything that you hear on a daily basis. This is against the, oh, 1% better every day, guys. And let's all love each other. Let's all understand each other. Let's be cool, nice and loving and warm and kind to each other all the time. Bro, do you fucking deserve war love and affection after you've just gotten out of the bathroom after fucking jacking off two times? Watching a bunch of weird fucking shit. Do you deserve love and attention and affection when you don't even give that to your fucking mom or your dad? Do you deserve love and affection and tolerance and shit when you yourself condemn other people who are actually living their lives? Who are actually doing something well because, oh no, 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 you're not supposed to do that. No, 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 no. Oh my god, they're crazy. They're all cunts, bro. They're stupid, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys out there who are actually providing for their families and doing something and they have like a different culture than us, destroy that. Ruin that. Like, get that shit out. I want only what I like. This is how fucking people live, man. This is how fucking people live, bro. So, how can you avoid this kind of social conditioning? Right, because what I've literally mentioned in the past, what, 21 minutes? It is co social conditioning. You have been socially conditioned to be like this. To act as if everything is fine. To have all these kinds of pussy beliefs about the world. To act as if any kind of pain is horrible. And that, oh my god, stress is bad. And, oh, you shouldn't be stressed at all. Like, young men nowadays, they're all so fucking stressed. And, oh my god, like, I'm gonna piss myself, dude. Good. Let them be stressed. I want to be fucking stressed. I don't want to live like a fucking careless monkey. Like I have for the past two years of my life. I am done living like a careless Dumbass monkey. And I know how it feels to live like that. I know how it feels to live this worry-free life where all you do all day is just hang out with your friends and have fun and eat all whatever you want because uh, who cares? You're, you're a young person, right? And, you know, go out to whatever party and do this and, oh my God, watch a movie and, oh, that's so nice and everything. I've lived through that. I'm 16 as of right now, bro. I've gone through all of that. And I'm telling you, it's fucking bullshit. It is fucking bullshit. That is all fucking social conditioning. You have to take things seriously, right? You have to take this as seriously as you possibly can. Because this is no fucking bullshit, wishy-washy what I'm talking about here. I'm not like some fucking conspiracy theorist. It's not that you don't have to be smart to realize that you're spending six hours a day or whatever how long doing whatever on your phone, watching whatever on TV, spent talking to whatever people, whatever people, bro. They change who you are. They condition you to be like them. Even if you don't know it, even if they don't, even if they don't know it, you get conditioned, you get fucking changed, you get influenced. Influence is the main key word of this video. Keep that in mind. So the first step, there are two steps to avoid social conditioning entirely and live your life like a fucking normal person for once and be able to use your brain without any kind of fucking added thoughts and opinions and beliefs coming out from the outside world. Right, so first, the first step is to change your beliefs. Right, this sounds very wishy-washy again, but the first step, if you truly wanna avoid yourself just being fucking brainwashed by the majority of people out there, I don't like using the term brainwash because it leads people to think that, oh my God, like, I don't even know, some stupid shit. But that's basically what's happening. They, you're getting brainwashed into believing that opinion. You're getting brainwashed into acting this way. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make like a quick side note here. I, I cannot imagine just how many girls I've seen in the past while. Like young girls, by the way, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? Who literally dress up. Like, have you seen those stupid fucking TikTok videos with the girls that fucking dance like that? Fucking sexualizing themselves, right? 
you're bound to see that at some point, right? They dress up just the same. And I knew people in my life, like fucking girls mostly, right? Who are literally in in front of me, bro. They were in front of me and they were doing like fucking TikTok dances with their hands up like this. I don't even know what the fuck they were doing. I see that and it's so fucking weird to know that this is how much we're being influenced by those things. And my think there's all oh, that's not that bad, bro. It's just a girl doing a silly TikTok dance. Well, today it's just a silly TikTok dance. Tomorrow it's a girl shaking her ass on camera. Tomo tomorrow it's some random young girl sexualizing her. So making some weird fucking shit up. And that's going to be this girl who just today she was doing this nice, very cool TikTok dance. Tomorrow she's going to be fucking sex. She's going to send out a weird, weirdly weird message on the internet. And people are going to respond well to it because there's a bunch of fucking perverts and weirdos and horny kids out there, right? And she's going to be like, oh shit, this is what's giving me validation. So let me keep doing that. And this is how you become socially conditioned. This is how you get brainwashed into doing that. We are social animals as humans, right? We cannot live without social interactions. And so when you find something that's highly rewarding, that sense of social interaction for you, now that's when you fucking throw yourself fully into it. And you don't even care if you're doing the right thing or not. And it's happened to me several times as well. And so you first need to realize the gravity, the importance, the true meaning of the situation. Like this is the first point of this first step. If you want to change your beliefs about what is going on, you have to change your opinion, your mind's conception of what is going on, of the situation. Because you might think to yourself, again, you might think to yourself, well, it's just a silly TikTok dance, bro. It's just some random people playing video games, bro. Like, I don't get what's wrong with that. Like, two hours of video games a day, bro, it's fine. Don't worry about it. The people that you spend your time with, they dictate who you are. Like, I cannot stress that enough. They dictate who you are. You need to understand just how fucking important this is. You are going to spend your entire life, your entire life, with yourself and with other people around you just... Always. You're never going to be on your own for more than several months because you're going to go crazy, by the way. You're absolutely going to go fucking crazy. You're always going to have whatever person around you, whatever fucking influence around you of any sort. Like, that is just normal. That's life. We get influenced by our environment. That's normal. But we can choose how we get influenced by that environment and how much and to in what way we get influenced by our environments. And so you need to understand the importance of this situation that, you know, this is not something that to just joke around and be like, oh my God, this guy said the word brainwash. He must be like a fucking conspiracy theorist. Like if you think that you're smart and you're like that, just click off the video, bro. Right now, just do that, right? You need to understand the true meaning of the situation because things are not gonna be easy. And things are gonna be fucking bad if we don't take action. They're not gonna be easy to change, you know, to change your fucking conditioning, to change the beliefs inside your head about all these kinds of things. It's a fucking journey to go on. But things are going to be fucking horrible if you don't change anything. Things are going to lead you down a path of misery, of weakness. You know, and for young, ambitious men, a better life will never be as it is depicted by most random people out there. And I mean specifically young men because the most people who are going to be watching this video are going to be guys, right? If you're watching this video, you're a young man, right? You're at the start of your existence. You have so many years ahead of you. Your better life, your better ideal of that life will not be in the hands of some random people out there. Some random people who go on the internet, 
like fucking Andrew Tate, like, you know, just with a fucking cigar and just so crazy sunglasses that wear, that are like hundreds of dollars in this crazy Rolex and a crazy suit and whatever. You're out there just with your Lamborghini behind you and you're in Dubai and you're like, oh my God, yeah, you're looking out in the horizon. And that's like the dream life and every young guy wants that now. Let's not fucking bullshit ourselves here, right? They are doing the same deal. They are fucking... Andrew Tate, all these kinds of fucking, and not just Andrew Tate, right? The entirety of that fucking mess. It's telling you to just live your life in pure materialism. They're telling you to live your life and just fuck all, all kinds of girls. And all, all girls are hoes, right? All of them are hoes. All of them, they just sell themselves off to people, right? They fuck whoever they get, but you do the same. But then you help those fucking girls destroy their lives as well. You're adding to that, but you know, at the same time, oh my god, they're they're the hoes, bro. I'm the high value man for fucking girls, but they're the hoes for fucking other guys. You are both fucked in this situation, right? And this is not the better life that you want to live. Trust me. Like, just, it takes more. It takes like two seconds to actually understand that this is bullshit. That they're selling you bullshit, right? And it's definitely even easier to understand that the majority of other people out there, not from this entire red pill, whatever, alpha male shit space, right? The people out there, beyond that, like the fucking worst of the worst, they are not going to give you good fucking life advice. The guy who's like, oh, you know, work hard your entire life and maybe you get to retire at 65 with a reasonable pension and your parents are literally fucking sick right now. From overworking their asses off just to provide for you. And oh, but you know, you work until 65. So you get to enjoy your younger years, right? And then you work and then you make some money and then you live your life. And then you die one day with your head full of regrets. While your parents have lived their entire lives trying to fucking breaking their backs to provide for you. Breaking their backs to be there for you and love you and support you. And you're like, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not going to do anything. Which means uh, I have to stress myself out a little bit. No, no, no. Because, you know, young men are so stressed. Like, young people are so stressed nowadays. Oh, my God. Like, we should all just, we should all just fuck right off, right? Let's all just fuck right off. Let's not take things so seriously anymore, guys. Like, come on. It's just, it's just, it's so simple. You know, just take it easy. Go with the flow, bro. Over the fucking flow. The majority of people who give life advice, that life advice that, you know, you should you should not be hard on yourself and you should just live your life, you know, and you should just go out with a girl sometimes, you know, and just have fun and maybe, maybe, fuck. Maybe get some quick stinky pussy, maybe get her pregnant. Maybe, but, you know, that's, that's just young kids fooling around. Oh, you can go out, you know, and have a, have a fucking drunk party where you're just, where you're just drinking your ass off. Because, you know, that's just young people, bro, you know, and, oh, well, if you want to know how drugs are like, well, you can, you can try them, yeah, yeah, sure, I mean, you know, you're young, bro, so, yeah, you should try them out. The majority of those people who give you that fucking advice, they're cowards. The majority of those people are people who've lived shit lives, who they've, they're people who've gone that exact path that they're talking about you know like not stressing out just enjoying their life and just doing whatever yeah okay they've gone the exact same path and look where they are right now it's like most of the time people telling you that shit it's like a middle-aged person with a belly this fucking size or like a fucking belly that's just horrible right with all these kinds of stupid health issues they need to take like 50 different kinds of pills every day in the morning as if it's a fucking pill breakfast. But, you know, no, just enjoy your life, bro. You know, if you want to smoke, then smoke because, I mean, you know, you only get life one life on earth, bro. Maybe what if you get hit by a bus tomorrow? Those are the people who are telling you that shit, you know, you're like, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So just enjoy today, right? People are telling you that shit. You don't know if you're, maybe you're going to die tomorrow. Maybe we're all going to die tomorrow. So I'm just going to enjoy my life. And let's be fucking honest. 
the majority of us don't fucking die the next day. We're not, the majority of us are not going to get hit by a bus. The majority of us are not going to die in a fucking thunder strike. Like lightning strike, my bad. Because thunder's like the shit that you hear. Fuck me. You know what? Those are the same people with like the, a belly this size. Who are... Literally fucking close to being alcoholics. Who eat the, as if they are absolutely morbidly obese and starving. I, I guess I guess that you know that doesn't really work. Oh, morbidly obese and starving, but you know you can choose one or the other. Like those are the people giving you life advice, you know, to just enjoy life and live your life. People who are literally fucking unhealthy, unhappy, who have like they probably most of the time like those people they have like very unhappy marriages. Their kids are shit. Like their kids have been raised in a shit manner. Their kids are like devils. But, you know, just enjoy your life, you know. I enjoyed my life and I got a kid at 19, you know. And, you know, I, I although, you know, I couldn't even like get, provide enough money for myself. I, I, I got this big credit loan from the bank and now I have to waste my fucking life away slaving for that. Just so I can return that money or some shit. Like, I don't know. Some shit like that, bro. This is the kinds, these are the kinds of people that are giving you life advice. You know, I mean, for example, take the fucking fat ass. Because we've all had this. If you go to the gym. If you go to the gym and you're there, you know, you're doing your fucking exercises, bro. And you have this one random fucking fat motherfucker. It's like a guy that maybe he's got decent arms, right? But he has a fucking belly this size. I'm not even kidding. Like, you know this. It's like a motherfucker that has a belly this size. Like, literally going like this. Right? A belly. A huge fucking belly. He's like fat. You can tell that he has like fucking several fucking... What do you even call them? Oh, I, I cannot remember what it's called, you know. But when he does like this shit, like there's like five layers here. You know, You know what I mean, right? A guy, a guy like that comes to you and he's like, oh, oh, you're doing this? Like, let me give you some fitness advice, buddy. Let me give, let me help you out a little bit. And he's, he's there just telling you, oh, you know, when I used to be young, I used to be like this crazy athlete. Now I used to do this and I used to do that. Uh, like I, I did this and you shouldn't do this because that's bad and everything. But you know, you should, you should, you can drink from time to time. You, you can, yeah. Like I go for, to, to make dollars from time to time. Like what's the problem? It's like, I feel like sometimes those people, they're genuinely fucking stupid. Like, they're telling you, like, yeah, it's just, yeah, I hit the gym, you know, and I, I eat McDonald's afterwards. Like, I don't see the problem. Yeah, I drink like a beer a day. What's the problem with that? And you see their fucking huge beer belly, bro. How can you take their advice seriously? Like, you, when you see that, you think to yourself, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, my main purpose in life after seeing you, bitch, is to not end up like you. Is to not have a fucking belly this size and have my liver destroyed from pills, drugs, and alcohol. That is... That's my new purpose in life, I guess. Just kidding. I'm not, gonna, I'm not changing my purpose that fast, but... You need to understand that your mind must go on a new path of thinking before... You can live a better life. You know, you cannot keep living as if those people out there who are giving you life advice, who are talking about all these kinds of different things and how you should live your life and self-care and self-love and just, you know, just just take it easy. You know, sometimes just relax, bro. Sometimes just take out uh, like a full day and just relax and just maybe you can you can play a few hours of video games if you want. Like you've, you've done hard work today. You spent two hours in total doing something. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so hard on you, bro. You're so stressed out. I'm so, I'm so sad, bro. Like, come on, let's just play some video games together. Like, those are, this is the kind of shit that we're hearing nowadays. You know, there's so many people out there just shitting on the self-improvement community, on the people who actually, like, the real self-improvement community, not the bullshit Oh, you know, I'm just 1% better every day. But, you know, today I felt, uh, today I felt, I just felt like playing two hours of video games. And so I just kind of played. But, you know, like, you know, 
failure is part of the success and oh my god uh, fucking dumbasses bro like i don't mean that self-improvement community i mean like the young people who shut the fuck up and do 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 the fucking work the people who don't go around talking as if they're out of a movie or out of a feel-good politically correct video on the internet you know they're like you know i respect your opinion and i like i thoroughly respect you and i i i I understand what you mean, but at the same time, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give a fuck because you see, like, I am different and you're different and different things work for different parts of us. So, you know, we're all different. And so you're like, you're just telling me, I don't give a fuck, fuck off. Instead of just saying, I don't give a fuck, go away or some shit. You're like, you're doing that for like five minutes straight. You're like having a monologue that's like five minutes long just to tell me fuck off. <laughs> absolutely fucking stupid man you cannot think that this social conditioning that is going on and this entire idea of men becoming more feminine of people just enjoying their lives of people just not doing work of people just acting like it's okay to just waste your time people who act like it's okay to just waste your life we cannot let those people get to us and one way that we do that, and the, the most effective way to do that is to get rid of their social con conditioning, is to avoid that. You cannot get rid of it because th those people, they have like a lot of influence on social media, on TV, outside, you know, in real life. They do have like a lot of influence. And you, so it's very hard to actually get rid of that conditioning that's going on. But you can avoid it. And so the second step after you've changed your beliefs, and I hope that like the monologue that I've made for the past, what, like 20 minutes, I hope it's gotten you to the point where you can understand the fact that the social conditioning that is going on is a fucking scam. They're scamming us into being weak, pathetic human beings, just so, you know, they can profit off of you playing one more hour video games, you know, buying one extra skin, buying this one new campaign fucking mission that is like restricted access you buy this this nice really cool t-shirt because it's like really expensive and it says that it has this cool fucking thing written on fear oh and you're buying like the the rolex and everything because you saw andrew tate having one and you you buying the cigars and you're smoking because oh you know like tobacco increases testosterone or some shit bro like shut the fuck up man shut up you cannot live like that. You have to change your fucking beliefs, man. And so the second part on how you can avoid this, like the first part was, you know, it was more on your mental side. It was me trying to convince you that what the fuck is going on out there is a waste of time, right? Here comes the practical advice. Here comes the shit that's actually going to be very practical that you can even take action on right now as I'm going to be talking about them, right? So the second step is to search and destroy the harmful external influences right search and destroy the harmful external influences and you're gonna see exactly what i mean by harmful external influences you need to i'm gonna start this off with one question that i want you to think about maybe you can journal and maybe you can bring out a piece of paper and write it down right where did your bullshit beliefs and opinions come from where did your bullshit beliefs and opinions come from? By bullshit, I mean all the opinions that you know yourself, that they are stupid, that they are a waste of your time, that they are a waste of your brain capacity and brain power. And yet you still have them. They're a waste of life. Those kinds of beliefs and opinions in your mind, where did they come from? Like, hopefully by the end of, by, the, by this point you've already talked, you've already written that down and you know. But I'm just going to fill this out in a very simple manner for you. I'm going to answer this in a very simple manner, which needs maybe no more fervor thinking. They, those fucking things, those bullshit beliefs and opinions, you know, maybe you're searching, you're searching right now deep within yourself, you know, and you're writing down like, oh, it's because, you know, like I have this one thing that I think about the world and oh my God and those fucking bullshit beliefs and opinions that you have, they did not come from you. 
they definitely did not come from you. Like maybe, yeah, there's some, maybe there are granted some authentic fucking bullshit beliefs that you have. But you probably know what they are and you're staying away from them. But now you're thinking to yourself, oh man, like this shit that like, it's really stupid. And it's in your mind right now. It did not come from you. You did not, you are not the one. Like this is really weird. And you might think to yourself, what the hell, man? You are not the one who's thought to himself, oh my God, I've worked so hard today. You know, I've done like two hours of fucking work. Oh, I, I've worked so hard today. I'm, I'm going to take a break now and I'm going to go play some video games. You are not the one who said that, who actually thought that. It was not you. It was the fucking people on the internet. It was the society out there telling you that, Yo, you're young, bro. You, should, you shouldn't like stress yourself out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just... Just play some video games. Come on, like, it's fine, bro. Who cares? Right? Who cares? It's just two hours. You know? Come on. It was not you who chose to play video games for two hours. Well, I mean, yeah. You did choose to play video games for two hours. But it was not you that had this thought. Like, that brought this thought in your mind. If that, if that makes any sense, man. Most of your bullshit beliefs that you have about the world that, oh my God, you know, you like, you see there's this girl and I'm just going to act very cold and distant from her, you know, in order to maybe get her to like me more. That is not what you think. That is definitely not your authentic fucking way of going at it. You have been conditioned by movies, by fucking red pill shit on the internet by alpha males and sigma grinds or whatever and random fucking people on the street who are wearing like all these kinds of branded fucking shirts like all these kinds of dumbass boys like i can all call them men like just boys on the street you know and they're like oh fuck hoes fuck them hoes bro and fuck that and and you're thinking to yourself oh man i'm not gonna talk to her like i'm gonna let her she's actually a cute girl and she's really nice but I, like I'm not gonna answer her text for like an extra day because you know that that's gonna seem as if I'm very busy and you're just spending the next 24 hours like literally just obsessing over that text. And you're like literally sitting in your fucking room like that. You're just fucking doing that. You're like, oh my god, I just I cannot imagine. Oh my, what is she? What her, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? Instead of you actually fucking talking to her, bro. Now you wait for an entire day because that's what some random fucking guys on the internet told you. This is what I did. When I had some girls message me, or when I messaged some girls, you know, I when they answered or when they given given the first message, I, I spent half a fucking day not answering just simply because I thought to myself, oh yeah, this is gonna make me look more attractive and like it's gonna make me seem busy and shit. When I was like literally fucking obsessing over that text, I was like, oh, I, like, I really wanna tell her this, but I'm gonna wait anyway. So, oh, you know, like, what is the point? This is the kind of like, it comes down to shit like this. It comes down to what you think about before you go to sleep. Before you literally lay your fucking head down and you sleep, your thoughts. They are still influenced by some random fucking people out there. Those bullshit beliefs and opinions in your mind, they came from the outside, right? They came from these external influences. And there's two kinds of external influences that you can think about. That they're pretty much the only two things that I've genuinely been able to find, right? And everything else, everything in there which is going to influence you. It comes down from two, those two things from other people and the media. Other people, right? That's the first one. And the media. I'm going to go into detail about each and every single one of them, right? So, hold on. Other people means literally any other person, any other person out there that you see and that you talk to, that you interact with on a daily basis on a consistent basis not necessarily on a daily basis but on this consistent basis maybe we see them maybe you see them like one or two days a week every week you see them one or two hours a day every day you see them for five minutes every god knows how many hours 
those are other people. It, they, are, they can literally be your family. They can be your friends. They can be random people that you see on the street. Any, any other fucking people that are not you. Like, you are you, right? I am me. You are you. Goo goo gaga caveman shit, right? Ooga booga. And the people out there are the people out there, right? And th those people out there, they are the other people. They are one of the external influencing factors. And so, the media is basically any kind of content or information or belief or thought or opinion displayed somewhere, right? That is what the media means. This is what I mean by the media. It's literally any kind of information that is displayed or most of the time it's biased information, right? Let's not, let's, let's not bullshit ourselves, but any kind of information, thought, belief, opinion that is displayed somewhere for the public to see, right? It's simple, right? Any kind of information, opinion, blah, 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 that is displayed in public. Maybe, maybe it's on a piece of paper, maybe it's a newspaper, but people don't fucking use that anymore. Or maybe it's on your phone. Maybe it's that TikTok video that you were looking at. Maybe it's that photo that you got from your mom with the funny minions and the funny jokes. Maybe it's the fucking random buff-ass motherfucker that you're seeing on Instagram. Maybe it's the femboy that's messaging you on Discord. <laughs> I'm not talking out of personal experience, never had that happen, thankfully. So let's talk about the media first. Once you've identified those harmful external influences, which in this case, in this exact case is the media, because we're talking about the media right now, you must destroy and heavily limit the things which you cannot destroy. Like, this is the deal, this is what you have to do. The, the primary protocol to doing anything, to literally avoiding any fucking social bullshit brainwashing. You find, you identify the external influence that is literally influencing you right now, that is giving you, it's pumping you full of thoughts and opinions that you don't even have yourself. You find that source and you fucking crush it. And if you cannot crush it, you put it down. You fucking push it away as far as you possibly can from yourself. Let's take an example, social media and the entirety of it, like the, all the apps and everything. They're fucking, they're, I think they want, they might be one of the most influencing pieces of media out there. If not the most influenceable, right? It's pumping you full of fucking bullshit information and beliefs that you don't have yourself, but you know, you just find yourself randomly thinking about because oh my god, random people out there have this opinion, you know, and it got in my mind, and I'm like, oh now, now this is what I'm thinking, right? And your your stupid fucking brain is tricking you and it's like telling you that, oh my god, this is actually my own thoughts, right? And because you have like such a huge pride and ego, you don't even want to admit that it's other people's thoughts and you just think it's yours and oh my god, you know, like no, it's just, it's just me. Like, I genuinely thought about this. I genuinely thought that I need to take a break because I've been working for two hours and, like, I shouldn't stress myself out. Do you really think that's you? Like, if you think that's you, bro, then you're a fucking dumbass, man. I'm sorry to tell you that. Maybe I have respect for you, but you're a dumbass, bro, if you think that. No, it's the fucking people outside. It's the media. It's the things that are coming in, the information that is displayed that you see. And so, you need to destroy that social media. I mean, you cannot basically fucking destroy Instagram, right? You cannot just burn it all down, right? I mean, unless you go to, like, Silicon Valley or whatever, like, the HQ, the headquarters are, and bring, like, a fucking flamethrower, but I don't think you would want to be a terrorist. No, in that case, then you have to literally destroy it. Like, you, you can get rid of it from your phone. You can delete your account, bro. You can fucking do that. Like, you, most people don't need Instagram. The majority of people, including you, like, don't, you're not that fucking special, right? You're not special at all. Including you, you probably don't need Instagram. You probably don't fucking need it for anything. It's just there, and you're just using it for some constant fucking dopamine. For some constant 
neurochemicals just pumping in your fucking brain whenever you see a funny video or a girl with huge tits in an ass. And so you either destroy, you take it away completely, or you heavily limit down the use. And I'm not, I'm not telling you right now, oh my god, oh, like this is a better alternative, but like I still want to see like one girl with huge tits and ass a day. No, this is not what I mean. You literally heavily limit down the use, right? This is the first part, but you can destroy it, right? You can destroy those things, right? So you heavily, you destroy those things completely, right? But on the things that you cannot destroy, which I'm going to talk about, by the way, with the things that you, maybe you shouldn't even destroy, maybe that you could destroy, you can get, could get rid of from your life. But there are some several things out there from the media that I believe will really help you out. That you have to keep it, but you have to heavily limit, right? First of all, you need to get rid of literally everything that you know is cope, right? There are several fucking things out there that you in your brain right now, you know that you have to get rid of them, but you're like coping right now. No, those exact things that you are like making up excuses for right now, you have to shut your brain off and you have to get rid of them. Because your brain has literally been found guilty of something. Now it's like, no, 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 this is actually good because it does that and it does that. Like you have to shut that all down. That entire fucking facade that your brain is making up, shut that all down right now. You have to get rid of everything that you know is scope, even if that is literally everything. That is actually everything. You know, if you know that you're coping when you're using social media entirely, or if you know that you're coping when you're playing video games, or if you know that you're coping by spending a bunch of time with those groups, with that group of people, then feel free. Feel fucking free. I'm giving you the green light to get the fuck away from those things, to just fucking get rid of those things from your life. To delete the social media accounts and the apps from your phone and anything that can remind you of it. To delete the fucking video games, get rid of them forever. To get away from the group of friends that, like, the group of friends, right? Who are literally ruining your life or making you feel like shit. I'm giving you the green light. Go ahead and do that. A life lived in your own authenticity is a beautiful life. The li A life that you live with your own authentic self and your own authentic life around other people that you convey your authenticity to it's a beautiful life man like i don't know how other people see it but this is literally i believe the best way to live your life be as authentic as possible with everything that you do with everything that you think with every desire that forms in your brain be as authentic about it as you possibly can by when you speak to any other person out there, be as authentic as you possibly can. Be you, right? But don't be the, like the bullshit part of you. I don't mean the fucking addicted Jeffrey dumbass. Oh, and I use the word Jeffrey. Fuck me. Don't be the fucking dumbass. The addicted piece of shit. Like, that's not what I mean by being yourself. What I mean by being yourself is the... Showing the true ambition within you, showing the fact that there are things out there that you think are cope, that you have, that you know that you have to get rid of, right? Showing that out because you know that that is actual true authenticity, not some random fucking bullshit out there that you know you're doing because there are some random people fucking throw it, throw it down your throat, and you're thinking that that's you, and you're just showing that to other people, they're gonna be disgusted by you. No, I mean the shit that is within you and it's far away from any external influences. Like shit that is literally locked within the deepest part of your soul. Like the things that, you know, truly resemble you as a person. I think it's really hard to get there and I'm still really much struggling. And I think this is like a lifetime journey to go through, you know, to find your true, true 100% authentic self. Like I think it's pretty damn fucking difficult, but it's worth, it's worth the pain. There's a valuable reason to keep using the media, you know, for example, for education, right? You must heavily limit your access to it. Like I've talked about this before several minutes ago. If there's a valuable reason to have media through your phone, through your computer, through your TV, on your fucking screen, on your wall, on in your life in general, then you must heavily limit 
your access to it because you can very, very easily just derail and go sideways completely. You know what I mean? I mean, think about, like, I've, I've heard this quote, which is really interesting, like this, this one guy who was, uh, he's like, uh, he was an addict at some point, I think drugs or whatever, but he overcame that addiction and he was in this uh, group of people, you know, that also help other people overcome their addictions. And he said this really interesting thing that addiction is like the ditch that you never get farther away by driving away. Like imagine yourself being on a road and you're in your car and there's a ditch, right? Like a very dangerous ditch. And no matter how far you try to drive away from it, the ditch is always at the same distance away from you. The ditch is literally never moving an inch. So you are as close, no matter how far, no matter how hard you're trying to drive away from the ditch, from the danger of, of driving in that ditch and hurting yourself. You, no matter how far and hard and fast you drive, you're never going to get farther away from it. It's always going to be at the same distance. And so what you can do, though, is you can make, you can make sure that you never end up driving in that ditch, that you never take your eyes off the fucking road and you end up in the ditch. That you always keep your eyes on the road, that you always keep your eyes focused. And this is exactly what I mean with the media and heavily limiting things. Because if you don't keep your eyes on the road, focused on getting away from the ditch, or at least, you know, trying to just keep, keep the same distance from the ditch, right? Then you're gonna you're, if you keep take your eyes off the road, you're gonna fall in that ditch. You're literally gonna spend thirty minutes looking at some weird, stupid shit on YouTube, looking at some stupid fucking video of like some people that you don't even care about, of something that's just a waste of time, of some stupid shorts, or some TikToks or some whatever. If you take your attention away from the road, you're gonna end up in the ditch. And so that's why you ha must heavily limit your access to it. Because, you know, when you heavily limit your access, it's like you're helping your, your brain focus easier and with less mind power on avoiding that ditch. You know, when you have all these kinds of measures set in place to not be a dumbass, not fucking go over the top, then you're not going to end up in the ditch. It's going to be much easier to avoid the ditch. And so you do that by... Setting goals for yourself as if, look, I am not going to spend any more than 10 minutes looking at this one thing. I'm not going to spend any more than five minutes in this entire day looking at this. Like, I'm going to, every single time that I'm going to open my phone from now on, I'm going to have a good reason for it. I'm not just going to pick it up out of nowhere and just start scrolling on shit because I'm bored. Every single time that I pick up my phone, I tell myself, okay, I'm going to go exactly on this app. I'm going to watch this exact thing for this exact period of time. And then I'm going to close my phone and I'm going to move on with my life. I'm going to move on with my fucking life. That's it. By heavily limiting your access, by setting some measures, even if they're mental measures, you don't have to necessarily make them physical measures as if, you know, I don't know, you, throw, you lock your fucking phone in a room and you're like, okay, no more time on my phone, you know, up until you just break and you unlock the room and you get your phone. Because it was stupid anyway or some shit, right? No, it, it's not just about physical measures, but it's about mental measures. Because if you don't save the mental aspect of the problem if you don't fix that that you are it doesn't matter how much fucking physical preparation you're doing for something you're gonna fail if you don't have the mindset for doing something then you're gonna fucking fail it's that simple no, no matter how well fit you're physically off right you're gonna fucking fail if you don't have the mindset for it and so you must only consume truly unbiased informational educational, useful content. Like this is, I believe, the only reason that I wanted to mention a while back, right? The only reason why I think you should be on the media. 
the only single reason for you to consume truly, and I mean truly educational content, like content that doesn't have any fucking biases towards one side or one side, content that doesn't have any fucking silent propaganda fucking messages in it, no content that's telling you, you know, that's like hip up and hip and cool and it's, you know, it's making stupid jokes that everybody can laugh to. No, I mean truly educational content of like a guy literally spilling out all his wisdom exactly as it is with no bullshit. I don't even know what to call it. No bullshit influences. And so maybe you can use it. You, this is what I use YouTube mainly for. Like this is like I have, you could say technically two social media. I have YouTube and I have Discord. And I, on Discord, I have, I'm in one server, I'm in my own Discord server, and I'm with the people in there, and I barely use it nowadays. Maybe I should use it more, I don't know. Probably not. And I have YouTube, which you might think, oh, he has YouTube. Oh, he's a, he's a horrible person. He's a devil. Bro, I use YouTube to watch fucking two-hour-long and three-hour-long podcasts about how to improve your sleep, about how to... Be in a better relationship with another person. About how you can grow bigger muscles. Like, stuff like this, right? This is what I'm using YouTube for. Three hour long, more important podcasts. Like, shit that is, like, not edited in the slightest. It's just a person talking to a camera for three hours straight. No fucking bullshit edits in between. No, no stupid shit, right? Just simply educational, useful content that's going to help you build a better future for yourself. It's going to help you better build better health, both physical and mental health. It's going to help you build your finances up. It's going to help you build a better life in general. That is the only way that it works, man. Like, if you cannot properly limit yourself, then just don't use it. Right? If you cannot properly limit your access to the media in general if you feel like you know you just cannot control yourself you cannot heavily limit your access and just not just watch only one important podcast and then you know not change to random fucking video that comes up they just don't use it then just don't use the media then i i, I just say if you really want to learn if you really want to do something Learn from wise people and learn from good books. You know, I'm, I think it's, I think I should encourage everybody out there, bro. Even if you have the media, still learn from fucking books. Like, use both. Use the media because it's amazing and use the fucking books because they're fucking amazing. Right? Use both of them to create something beautiful, to create knowledge, to create power. You know, but if you feel like, you just cannot use social, you cannot use me, the media in general for your own benefit. And it only feels like it's dragging you down. Then you take that shit away and you focus only on books and on this content that is written down on a piece of paper that has been very well done. That, you know, like these kinds of nonfiction books that are generally fucking meaningful and life changing. That's it. Like that is the only way that I can think that you can do it. There's nothing else that you can do. If you feel like you cannot limit yourself, just limit yourself to books only. Just leave the media and all these kinds of bullshit things out and just focus on learning from books. And so, you know, I've mentioned the two aspects of like the external influences. You have the media and you have other people. <laughs> you have other people, bro. Right? And so with other people, it's quite simple, bro. You get rid of all the stupid, lazy, bitchy, arrogant, cowardly people from your life. If that is within your reach. You get rid of the fucking people who annoy the shit out of you. The people who you, like, you on a... You don't even need to see more than twice. Like, the people you can just throw a glance to and that you know, like, those people, they shouldn't be in my life. You get rid of those people, man. Like, this is, again, it comes down to how authentic you are with yourself because... Most of the time, you know when something is not right. You know when you're fucking coping. You know when 
your brain is just making up excuses, right? So I want you to be very honest with yourself as your brain is making up these excuses and find those exact people that your brain is making excuses for right now that it's like going nuts about. And I want you to find those people and I want you to get rid of them from your life. Don't kill them, right? Don't get rid of them in that way, but just kind of cut contact with them. Like, don't talk to them anymore. Maybe go on about your fucking life. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know why I felt the need to just mention getting rid of them doesn't mean fucking doing that. It means just kind of bye-bye. I'll see you. I'll see you in another life or some shit, you know? You need to get rid of those fucking people, man. If that is within your reach, if it is within your reach, you know, to leave some fucking bullshit friends, some friends, right? If you can leave them and just move on with your life, then that is for your own benefit. It is within your reach. It is something that you can do. But if you have like a fucking teacher in school or some shit, or if it's like a fucking random guy in your classroom, you're not going to be able to just get rid of him completely. I mean, you can kind of build barriers in between and like just make things as isolated from that person as possible, but you cannot like get rid of them completely, right? That is not within your reach. And there's also certain people that you don't want to get rid of. And I need to make this very fucking clear. As much as you want to get rid of all the fucking negative people and all the people that give you shit, maybe some of those people that give you shit that maybe are a bit negative, they are within your circle of loved ones. You cannot and you should not ever get rid of your loved ones. Like it's that simple, you know? For a lot of people, their loved ones is family. And for me, that's the same, right? My loved ones is my family and like one friend that I see on a daily basis. Like that's, mo those are, these are my loved ones. They are my loved ones. They are the people that I care for and that I would fucking fight for, that I would sacrifice so much for, that I've sacrificed so much for in the past one year and a half. Those are the people that you don't want to get rid of. Those are the people that you want in your life. Even if they have some negative traits. Even if they're people who, you know, maybe at the first glance and, you, you know, your brain is making up excuses. Maybe, you know, there are people that they're not doing so well, but, you know, they're your fucking family. Like, this is the only exception from what I've told you. Your family, your loved ones, like the people that you care for so much and that you love with your entire being and your entire heart and the people who love you back with their entire being and their entire heart, those are your loved ones. And for the majority of people out there, it's going to be family. And so I'm going to restrict myself to my own family because that is my personal case. I'm not going to get rid of my fucking family. I've gotten rid of a lot of people from my life. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, bro. I have people in my life in my family, my loved ones, who are fucking annoying, who are literally, like, they're negative as fuck, they're pissy, they're arrogant, whatever, but they're my loved ones, like, they're part of my fucking bloodline, I am not gonna fucking give those people up, man, no, because I know that even with all those negative aspects, I love them, and they love me, because they're my loved ones, even through all of that shit, they love me, and I love them, and we've been together for so much, I'm not going to fucking leave them. But, you know, some random guy on the fucking street that I don't like, fuck that guy. Some random guy in my fucking class, bro, fuck you, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. But my family, bro, it's my fucking family. And I would do everything, I would do anything for my family, man. You must care for your loved ones, and you must tolerate some of the things that they do and say, right? You must care for your loved ones as much as you possibly can. And you have to tolerate, because you might have to tolerate some of the things they do and say, because they won't always say the right things, the things that you really want to hear, or maybe the things that are actually useful and helpful. Maybe sometimes they're going to spill shit out of their mouth. Like, it's going to happen. Like, you probably... Have I probably had in the past what one hour and 30 minutes? I probably spilled a bit of shit myself. I don't know, but you have to tolerate them, you have to tolerate them, and you have to fucking love them. And you have to understand that they're most likely just trying to help you out, like they're, they're not there to fucking give you shit. Like, if, the, if they're truly your loved ones, and you know when they're truly your loved ones, right? You know that. 
If they're truly your loved ones, they're not, they're not going to give you shit. Right? Just for the sake of giving you shit. Maybe you, maybe they're trying to give you advice. They're going to, they're trying to help you out, but you feel like they're just trying to give you shit. Maybe, you know, and in return, you also give them shit back. Don't do that. Like I'm, I'm trying to make this very clear. If you have like, maybe, I don't know, my mom comes up to me in my room right now. Right. And she's like, Oh wait, hold. stop making so many videos. Like you're going to fucking go crazy one day. I don't know. Like this is a very, very random, meaningless example that I've just made up in my mind. I'm not going to be like, oh, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> uh, I cannot imagine saying that to my mom, bro. She'd kill me, bro. <laughs> like, I'm not going to give her shit for it. I'm not going to tell her, oh, fuck her off or some shit. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to be like a little bitch. I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be like, well, why? You know, what's the deal? But I won't give her shit for it. Or maybe, you know, if it's something like less cr insane as I just made that example maybe it's your dad or it's your brother or it's your sister it's a really important friend and he's telling you something that you just know a scope or just something that it's just stupid but they truly believe it and so you know instead of you being like oh, well dumbass you're a you're a big dumbass bro you're a you're a big you're a big piece of shit you know instead of saying that you, you might leave, you just tolerate them bro you fucking tolerate them and you try to stand your ground but you know if it feels like it's too much just tolerate it like, it's your fucking family, man. Like, to some extent, right? I don't mean everything. Because there's going to be probably times when they're going to go way over the fucking line. And that's when you have to stop tolerating. That's when you have to take action. Like, this is also something that I, I need to make serious and clear to everyone. There's going to be times when your loved ones are going to make stupid fucking decisions. Or they're going to say stupid shit. And they're going to do stupid things. That's when... And they're like those stupid things, they're that bad that you actually have to intervene. That's when you intervene. That's when you stop tolerating, and that's when you fucking intervene. But when it's like some random fucking remark, oh, oh my god, like maybe you shouldn't maybe you shouldn't just be all like on the no sugar diet, you know, as I am. You know, my my mom tells me that sometimes, you know, she's like, Oh well, you should eat some sugar because it's good for you. And I'm like, What? Bro, what? Like I'm, I'm not, it's stupid right but i'm not just gonna go up to her and be like what what do you mean are you crazy i'm not gonna start like telling her all the fucking side effects and problems that she get by eating a bunch of fucking sugar and she's like you know maybe maybe you should go out with your friends more you know with like the old friends that i used to have right like instead of just telling her like dumbass i'm not gonna do that they're all cunts anyway I, I hate being around. I'm not going to tell her that because, you know, it's just going to make her feel bad. No, I'm just going to tell her, yeah, yeah but yeah, no, I know. I, I, I have some things to do at home and I, 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 can't, I don't have the time for it. I tolerate it. You must listen to what your family has to say, but you have to listen to that and take in the information, but you take it in while you have already built this strong, flawless, unbreakable mindset. And so when your parents tell you something, you know, they're out there like, or when, whatever loved one, I'm still giving the example for my family, right? When my parents tell me something about, you know, maybe how I should maybe do this with my life, or maybe I should try to go into this. And I know it's like some fucking bullshit that I just don't even give a fuck about or something that I know it's stupid. That I know it's a waste of time. And I, instead of just giving them shit for it, I'm, I'm listening to what they have to say. I'm nodding, you know, and I'm, yeah, okay, maybe that, that would be something, right? But, you know, at the same time, you see, this is happening and this is happening. And I, I'd rather do that and that. I'm listening to what my parents, I'm listening to what my loved ones have to tell me. But I'm not just eating that information up like it's a fucking ice cream. You know, when I haven't eaten in five days, you know, I'm just eating the fucking ice cream like a maniac. No, I'm not indulging in it. I'm not indulging in information that they give me. I'm taking that in, but I'm very, very cautious about it. I'd rather go five days without eating the ice cream, right? I'd rather just push the ice cream aside and think to myself, I'm not going to eat sugar. Fuck you. You know? Instead of just letting their thoughts and their opinions and their beliefs just influence me from the outside because they're gonna say things 
that are going to influence you from the outside. You know, maybe like the most common belief that I think I believe I've picked up from them is that, you know, I'm young and that I should just enjoy my life and that, you know, I just I should just do things and have fun and do whatever. Right. Like that's the most common be belief that I believe I've picked up from them that I've managed to destroy. That I've managed to filter out. And when I hear that, like nowadays, when I feel that my mind just goes blank, you know, there's no longer any more conflict. There's no longer any more right or wrong. Are they telling the truth or not? No, it's just simply my mind just goes blank when they hear that. And I just like completely set aside the entirety of the thing that they just said, right? About, you know, enjoy, just enjoying your life and just having fun. Like I just push that away. And, I, and then, you know, I keep going on, but I heavily filter out the things that they tell me like i you imagine your imagine your mind being open to new ideas right from your family from your loved ones it's like t these two doors but these two doors they also have like a mosquito net you know and so you're letting the air come in you know you're breezing up the house you know the whatever it is that the doors are being open for but you're not letting the mosquitoes or the flies or the pesky bugs get in no, you're filtering that out. You have a filter here, and when the fucking air goes in, it just passes through with no problem, right? The good thoughts, the good beliefs, the air that's bringing you life. But when the mosquitoes and the flies and the pesky bugs and the spiders and shit, whatever, they get stuck on the net, or they just fuck off somewhere else, outside of your home. Or when the random neighbor's cat wants to fucking come in your house, like, you know, you have the net. She's not going to eat your fucking food off the counter. You have to filter out the things that your family tells you. Right? That's, that's what I want you to get out of this. You need to understand that they have problems and issues. Just like both of us do. Right? Your family and your friends that mean a lot to you. Your loved ones. right? The people that genuinely mean the world to you. They have their own problems. They have their own issues. They have things that they're dealing with. Just like you and I do. Like, we're not special whatsoever. Right? We're not special. We're not better than them in any... Like, maybe we are in some aspects of life because, you know, yeah, maybe you're more fit than your dad or maybe, I don't know, you haven't drunk as much alcohol as your dad or like you're more... You have a more sexier hair than your mom does or some shit. Like, I don't know. Like, in some aspects of life, you're going to be better at them. But in some aspects of life, they're going to be better at you. Like, you sh you don't you don't fucking compete with, like, the people that you love the most. You're not going to compete with your dad. For what? He's your fucking dad, man. Like, if he wanted to compete with you, he would have destroyed you 16 years ago. If you're 16 or, like, whatever, however old you are. <laughs> what your parents, what you, like, your loved ones in general, what they perceive is good for you won't always be that way, won't always be so. What they think is going to be good for you, that, you know, my parents think for me that, you know, I I should go out with my friends, the old friends that I have, and you know, have some more fun and go out. Why don't you go out? Why don't you just, why do you always stay indoors? Or maybe why don't, why are you always on your own oh, at home, right? Well, because I'm here, I'm doing my work and I'm completely fine with that. You know, I go... I go have social interactions at the gym every day and whatever and so on and so forth. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, like you're still here. So you should, maybe you should go out and do this. Yeah, why not? Like you should do this and that. And this is when I tell myself, I remind myself, you know, maybe my mind at that point is like, oh yeah, maybe you should. Yes, yes. You know, it's like my fucking bullshit mind is telling me, yes, maybe you should take a break because you've been working very hard. Although like you... You've done barely two hours of work today, but you've been working very hard and you shouldn't be stressed. And so you shouldn't stress yourself out. So, you know, you should go out with your old friends and maybe, I don't go out and eat at McDonald's or waste some fucking time doing stupid shit that doesn't make any difference in your life. But I then I remind myself, what my parents are going to tell me, it's not always going to be right. They're not always going to be right about everything. And that's when I just tell myself, okay, well... They mean, they mean best for me, like they just want what's best for me, but at the same time, they don't, they won't always know exactly what's best for me. And that is the point where I have to take responsibility in my own hands, and I have to do the things that I know 
are best for me. Because people everywhere, they're going to talk. They're going to tell you, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you should try to do this career, or you should try to do that, or you should live like this, or you should eat that, or you shouldn't eat that. And they're going to talk. But you know best, you know, with your own armed with the knowledge that you gain from reading books, from consuming educational content, like that's unbiased, that's not socially conditioned. Arming yourself with that knowledge, you can make amazing decisions for yourself. Period. Yeah, so I have like this point written down here, pass their thoughts and beliefs through a filter in your mind. It's, that's such a interesting thing to look, think about, you know, like the filter in your mind, you know, when you open up your mind, you know, when you open up the gates, the doors to your mind, you must have a filter, you must have a fence that guards all the bad things out and lets the good things pass, pass through. You, you don't just fucking throw in, you don't just open your doors and then you embrace the world as it is. Because that's horrible. That's not going to lead you very far. Because, you know, there's like all these people out there who are like, oh yeah, I'm very open to new things. And you just see them getting drugged at some fucking stupid festival in the middle of nowhere. And they then they get picked up by the fucking police. Be, just because they were open to things. Like, bro, if they were, if they wanted to actually, I mean, yeah, essentially they were open to things, but in a very bad way, in a very harmful way. You know, they could have just been open to the idea of, you know, maybe going to a festival or maybe, you know, they would have been open to the desires in their mind that form authentically instead of just going after some random person out there and go, ending up taking drugs and getting fucking picked up by the police or some shit. I don't know, whatever. You know, like those people, they don't, they, they just open up their doors, but they don't put the fucking mosquito, the mosquito net in place. And what I'm telling you is that you have to open up your doors. You have to be open to new ideas, but keep that fucking mosquito net there for God's sake. Don't let the fucking mosquitoes and the filthy bugs. And you know, for your, probably if you didn't get this, like all the bugs, they're like the bad thoughts and the bad beliefs and the bad opinions that you don't want in your mind. But you let the air pass through, you let, you let like the nice smell of a tree outside, you know, that's made flowers and shit. You let that smell come through in your house. That's beautiful. Right? But you don't let the fucking bugs, you don't let the big ass wasps this size, right? You don't let them fucking buzz through in your house. You must be authentic with them and most importantly with yourself. If you want to stop the social conditioning idea from destroying your mind and destroying your life, then you have to be authentic with yourself and you have to be authentic with your family. You see, when my, parent, my, when my parents tell me, yeah, maybe you should go spend some more time with your friends or maybe you should, uh, I don't know, do this or that, you know, I think to myself, well, that's kind of a waste of a time. Like, I'd rather not do that. Like, I just don't get why I should do that. Like, I, I just feel like shit doing it, knowing that I'm not working or that I'm not doing something that I like more. My bad, sorry. You know, and that's when I tell them, yeah, but, you know, I'm actually telling them that. I'm telling them, yeah, but, you know, you see, I think that it would be a waste of time because I'd rather do this instead. Because... It just doesn't make any sense to go there and waste a bunch of time doing nothing important, just wasting your fucking time. When I could be doing something that I know is productive and that's going to make me feel good at the end of the day. Like truly good and fulfilled. That is more valuable than some fucking random time spent doing whatever else. You know what's best for you? Armed with knowledge and education and all of that, you know what's best for you. So you have to be authentic with that, with that, those desires that you have with your parents, with your loved ones in general. You know, when you have your friend tell you, oh, why don't you hang out with us so much anymore? You know, like, look, man, I'm going to be honest. Like, I just don't like hanging out with you guys because I feel like we're not doing anything when we're, we're just wasting time. We're just like, I just see you guys like, I don't know, picking up a fucking cigarette and just lighting that and just smoking and listening to shit music and do whatever. Like, I, well, I'd rather do something else. 
and they're going to be like, yeah, okay. Maybe they're, maybe they're going to be like cunts, but maybe they're just going to be like, yeah, okay, fair enough. I mean, I've had people that I'm like, like that in my life, you know, who just said, yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, we do waste time. <laughs> that was it. I just had to be authentic about it. Be authentic with what I thought. I didn't make myself a bitch to those people that I mean that like I love so much. I'm not gonna tell my dad. You know, he's telling me, "Oh, right, maybe you should spend more time with your friends." I'm not, I'm not gonna tell him, "Dumbass!" Like those friends are all cunts anyway. Like, what the fuck are? You, what the fuck do you know? I'm not gonna tell him that. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna tell him, "Hey, look, well, you know, I understand what you mean, but this is why I don't want to be with those people, and this is why I'd rather be doing that." And he understands it, and he's like, "All right, cool." It's up to you, man. I respect it. That's it. You don't need to make a fucking fuss out of it. You need to respect your parents, but you have... You, yeah, your parents, your loved ones, whatever, blah, 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 right? You have to respect them, yet heavily filter out the things that they tell you. Heavily filter out and be very... Have your, you remember that analogy that I made about a car that's always... No matter how far away it tries to drive, it's always as close to the ditch as it was previously? You have to keep your eyes on the road. Because you have to avoid getting closer to that ditch. You have to keep your eyes on the fucking road. When your parents are telling you some shit, it's very easy to just take your foot off the fucking brakes and everything and just, just fucking press the acceleration on max and just drive like this and end up in the fucking ditch. And end up letting some a bunch of fucking mem a bunch of sorry, opinions and beliefs and whatever and thoughts of theirs flood your mind and influence you in a very harmful way. So you have to, you know, keep that, keep in mind that analogy, you know, keep your eyes on the road. You're never going to be farther away from the ditch as you are right now, but you can stay far away from it. Like you can stay at this exact same fucking distance forever from the ditch, but the ditch is always going to be there. The ditch is always going to be there. It's going to be fucking waiting for you to throw your car into it and hurt yourself. And... There's like a subsection to this, you know, for school and work and whatever. If you're in school or work and then you have to be around those people all the time, then you'll have to spend, yeah, you'll have to spend time around all kinds of people, right? You're going to need to be around a plenty of bunch of people that you might not want to be around. Like, I'm going to be honest, I'm in school and sometimes there's people around me that I just simply wish would just fuck right off. Or I simply wish that I could just fuck right off myself, right? I I'm going to be honest, right? Or maybe in another environment. There's people who I wish would just simply fuck right off. But I know that, you know, they're not going to fuck right off because they're there. I'm going to be with them for the next four years of high school. You know, it's like, what the fuck do you want me to do about it, right? So instead of that, I'm going, instead of just pissing myself off and being like very angry about it and whatever, I'm authentic and I filter out all the bad influence that those people give out. You know, all the people that annoyed me and that fucking make shit worse. I'm authentic with myself and I tell myself each and every time I hear them talking shit to me or like talking shit to someone else. You know, and I feel like giving into that or maybe like being influenced in a negative manner by them. I think to myself, this is not who you are. Those people, those fucking people, they are horrible. They are pieces of shit. They will live horrible lives. If you let yourself get influenced by them, you will end up just like them. And you don't want that, do you? No, you don't. And so that's authenticity. That's my, that's like a, an example of authenticity. You're like, well, look, this is who I am, right? This is who they are. I don't want to end up like them. And so if I don't want to end up like them, then I have to filter out all the fucking bad influence that they're giving out. I have to de detach myself away from what they're telling me and for what the fuck they're saying and from the shit that they're talking all the time because I hear it and it's always it's gonna end up in your mind if you don't keep your eyes on the road you're gonna end up in a fucking ditch you're gonna end up picking up a new fucking phrase that they're talking about all the time and it, it's gonna end up being in your vocabulary that's something that's happened to me really interesting right I used to spend my time around all these kinds of people in my class and I picked up this word it's, it's, it's kind of like a curse word that I always disliked before, right? I, I always disliked using it. I just, no, it just sounded stupid. It just sounded very hooligan -y, right? And I picked it up and I just, 
I started using it in my own language with them. Like they were talking through that word and everything. And at some point, you know, initially I was filtering it out. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to use that word. But then I, I, I kept my foot off the fucking brakes. I was not looking at the road. I ended up in the fucking ditch. I picked up the word and it's my vocabulary now. And I'm trying to get it out because I don't like it. I don't like talking to people and using that fucking word, you know, when it's appropriate or whatever. It just feels like it's just not nice. I don't like it. And all of that, just because I, for once, I took my attention away. I took my attention away from the road and I ended up in the ditch. So, you know, you need to be flexible. You need to be flexible with this. You need to be flexible with the idea that you're going to be in environments where things are not going to go your way. You're going to be in environments where you're not just going to be able to control everything like a fucking god. Right? You're going to be in environments where you're going to have to go through those environments. You're going to have to face adversity. And that is when you need to be flexible. That is when you need to be flexible around those people. You have to learn how to be around those people, how to convey with them, how to live with them, how to coexist with them for a decent whatever period of time it is that you have to be around those people or in that environment. You have to be flexible. You have to, and I. this is another quote that I really like and I think it's going to help you out a lot. So keep this in mind for the rest of your life, if possible. Be strict with yourself, but tolerant with others. Be strict with yourself, but tolerant with the people around you. I'm going to be strict with myself. I'm not going to fucking let myself eat sugar. I'm not going to let myself go out with stupid people. I'm not going to let myself play video games. I'm not going to let myself waste time on social media. I'm not going to let myself fuck off somehow. Right? But I'm going to be tolerant with my family who might, you know, still drink, who might still eat sugar, who might still go out with people who are questionable for me. They might still, I don't know, do whatever. Maybe my friend, you know, he does something that I don't really like. But at the same time, you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, if he's on self-improvement as I am, well, he's going to figure it out himself. You know, I, so I let him be. You know, because it, once you just kind of start getting into other people's business like a bunch and you just start talking over them and you're like, don't do that, don't do this, be like this and be like that, you're going to fucking annoy them. There's going to there's, there's gonna be resentment building up and that's not good, right? This is like full relationship advice here. Like, man, if you're in a fucking relationship or something, just don't end up being like the fucking people, person that just spurting out a bunch of fucking shit, bro. Because you're going to end up making other people around you resentful. And they're going to be resentful. They're not going to like you that much. And they're less likely to listen to what you've told them. And in the future, maybe if they didn't like do what you've told them in the future, they'll be less likely to do what you've told them. Or they will and they'll just do it with less respect for you. And they'll lose respect for you. You know, you have to set an example for yourself. You have to be strict with yourself. You have to set an example for yourself. And others will naturally follow through. You know, that's how I ended up doing it with my friend. We both go to the gym together. You know, I, I, I try to do my best to be my own best self. And at some point, you know, he saw that and he saw me talking about how video games are bad and everything. And he was still playing video games at some point, right? He was still doing some things that, you know, are very questionable. And I was talking about how, you know, like those things are bullshit and they're bad. And But I didn't, I didn't just tell, I, I had several periods of times, you know, where I told him, hey, look, like, they're bad, you have to stop, and, you know, he got pissed at me, and we ended up almost arguing about it, and everything, right, and then I just kind of dropped it, I thought to myself, yeah, fuck it, I'm not gonna tell him shit anymore, you know, and at some point, one day, he was like, yeah, I just kind of stopped playing video games, I was like, what, he was like, yeah, I stopped playing video games, and now he's literally stopped playing video games all of a sudden like that, and he's been, like, clean for months, and he, He's fine. He doesn't have any fucking problems. He just like that. He's taken away an addiction that he's probably had for the majority of his life. Same with social media. Same with everything. He's taken away addictions that have been around his entire fucking life just from having me around and me setting myself as an example. Right? Me fucking striving to be strict of myself. You know, he's gone some... He's been inspired by that, you know, and this is how I've been inspired by other people. I've seen people out there. I see people out there working hard. 
you know, on the internet, like fucking looking at educational content, I see people working hard to build the content that they're like giving out to a, to another person. I think to myself, fuck me, I have to fucking work harder. Like if this person is doing this, then I have to fucking do that. Come on. Like, you know, I get inspired by seeing other people do things that I'm not. Like good things that I could be doing that I'm not. And so I get inspired and I take their example. It's people that I admire and you know, it naturally ends ends up to me, you know. There's also another aspect that I think it's really interesting, you know, regarding influence and everything. You cannot completely take away influence. Like external influences, right, from the media, from other people. But there's two kinds of influences, right? There's good, there's bad influence, right? The shit that you don't want in your fucking life, like the shit that's horrible that I talked about at the beginning of the video that I kind of mentioned throughout and the good influence. It's like the shit that you actually want. It's the shit that you actually want. Maybe from the media, that would be the influence of seeing somebody achieve a goal that is really meaningful to them and talking about it and telling you how you can get through that yourself. And you're like, you're, you're being influenced in a positive way. I'm hoping that this is what I'm doing with this video, you know? If my thing, you might have thought to yourself, well, you're talking about how to not influence people, but you're influencing me right now with this video. Yes, I'm hoping that I'm influencing you in this good way, not in a bad way, in a good way, in a productive way, which will actually help you move on with your life. And so you'll always be influenced by things and other people. Always. But you can choose whether it's good influence or bad influence. I'm choosing good. So... Around my family, you see, I've been trying to set more of an example for myself and everything and work harder because I love my family and they mean everything to me. And I've seen my parents, bro. I've seen their their line of thought, their behavior around me, behavior around other people, their beliefs change in such a beautiful, positive way. And it's happening and it's happening. All because I just shut up. And I did the work. And when things, you know, like got a bit weird, when I stopped eating sugar, when I stopped eating whatever, and when I started doing things that I knew were good for me and everything that my parents saw a bit weird, they were asking me, why are you doing that? Or like, maybe you shouldn't do that. Or maybe, you know, I'm telling, and I'm explaining to them, look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I feel like I should be living my life. And they did tell me, yeah, fair enough. And then at some point, you know, they end up thinking about it in their own free time and everything. They come to the conclusion that, yeah, maybe that is actually something good. You know, like this has recently happened with all the kind of plastic talk, you know, of like the estrogenics and everything. I've been very much against, you know, like eating from plastics and shit, but, you know, sometimes they're still around. They're still around in the household, definitely, but sadly, but... I'm talking about how bad they are and everything. At first, like, I really annoyed my parents about it. They were like, what the hell do you want us to do about it? Like, you know, what the hell? Like, everything is wrapped in plastic. You want us to just... It's like, we cannot live anywhere, anyhow else, right? And I'm, okay, okay, well, shit, you know, you're tr you're right about it. But, you know, I mean, when there's instances where you can choose other things instead of plastic, please, like, why don't you do it? And they're like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Right, fuck off. <laughs> No fuck, no fuck offs were said, but you know, and later on, they ended up, my parents, especially my mom, when she was packing the food and everything, you know, that they were going to take for the next day, she didn't pack it in plastics. She packed it in this nice paper bag and she was like, yeah, because, you know, I, I know that it's good, you know, to put it in things that are not plastic because plastic is not good for us and everything. I was like, fuck yeah. I was just so happy. I was like, fuck me, bro. That is such a nice thing to transition to. And this is what I want for you as well, man. And I also have another extra thing here that I want to talk to you about. That spending some time away from other people in the media can be useful. That means essentially a period of some sort of solitude. Or maybe partial solitude, right? Where a period in period of your life where you you take you take away like the majority of your influence, you, like you literally shut them out. Like this is what I did with for a good amount of time for a good, a good half a month, half a year or something like that. You know, I I deleted Discord, I deleted my old accounts, I don't have them anymore and everything. I've deleted all the other things that I was not using 
my phone almost at all, right? Granted, I was still watching self-improvement videos. But that was it. I didn't have anything else, right? Nothing else. I stopped talking to those people in my life. And there was like a period, a solid period of like two months in which I was completely by myself with my own family. That was it. With my two parents and my brother, you know, and we were like, this was my entire social circle for like two months. And I got, I got so much growth out of that, you know, from taking it from heavily limiting, like I don't watch TV at all. I don't watch movies at all. I don't watch, I don't listen to music a lot. When I do, I, I really like to listen to good music. I don't listen to fucking bullshit, whatever rap, you know, about killing some guy in a home while his fucking girlfriend is next to him or some shit. Like, I don't, I don't listen to that, you know, and I don't like, I don't consume a lot of content. You know, I'd say that two hour long podcast every few days, maybe. Right. And books and whatever. And that's it. I don't have any fucking external modern fucking influencing going on. And so in that period of my life, you know, in those two months where I was completely by myself and with my own parents and that was it, I believe that in those months I I got to change my own line of thought and my beliefs in such a meaningful way, in such a very practical and helpful, rational way. And I think that's going to help you out, man. It's going to help you set your priorities and your current purpose in place. It's going to help you figure out what means the world to you right now and what you should be focusing more on. Because before those several months of solitude and like partial solitude, right? Not full solitude, but you know, partial solitude, like taking a lot of things away and just focusing on several few things, right? That is when I realized that my parents, that is when I first opened up my eyes to the reality of my parents' work lives. When I saw just how much they were working, because up until that point, I didn't pay no attention to it. But, you know, those two months, I I ended up genuinely thinking, because I didn't have, like, any mindless distractions anymore, so I was by myself, and I was realizing just how much my fucking parents work, just how much time they're spending at work every week, and how much little, how little free time they have. And I thought to myself, fuck me. Like, I don't want him to live like this forever. And that's become like my main priority to get to retire my parents, to retire my family. That is my main priority, my current purpose in my life right now, to retire my parents and then extend family after. But, you know, my, my biggest, my biggest goals, my biggest priorities are my two parents, my mom and dad. But that's it. You know, and I've, I've said those things in those two months. And it helps remind you why you're fighting. You know, when you spend time in solitude and with yourself and you think back on the life that you've lived. You know, I do that a lot these days. I think back on the, especially with every video, like you've noticed that I start almost, like I think almost every single video with like a story of myself. You know, in a certain environment doing a certain thing. Because it helps me remind myself why I'm fighting. It helps me remind myself why I'm on self-improvement, why I'm doing this, why I need to work hard so I can stay the fuck away from that and get farther away from this. Get farther away from that situation in my life. You know, and just move in the other fucking complete opposite direction and make sure that I never get close to that place ever again in my life. Whew, well, this was kind of a fucking long damn video. Hope you gained some value out of it, bro. I mean, I, I spent some time making it and spent some time recording it as well as you can probably fucking tell. If you feel like you've gained some value from it, if you feel like it's helpful, then like the best way that you can help me out is by subscribing, by liking the video, by writing comments because it helps with the algorithm, you know, it helps boost the video up. Like, that could be really nice if you could do that. And uh, share it with other people, man. You know, if there's somebody out there who would benefit from watching this, share it with them, bro. Help me out, bro. Give me an extra fucking view, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll see you later, bro. Good luck.